What's going on everybody? My name is Hal and I'm here to talk about my experience with applying for the electrician apprenticeship program. Um, just a little bit of background. I applied for the Portland, Oregon IBEW 48. Um, I submitted the application on November 1st and I got an email back on the 19th um, telling me that I was approved and I qualified and whatnot and they gave me a time and date. Um, to come in to take my aptitude test, which was um, yesterday, December uh, 13th. And so that kind of gives you a bit of time frame of, you know, what you should expect when you first submit your application into when you should, you know, get your email uh, giving you that time and day to come in and take your test. And so going into this test, I was super nervous because it's been so long since I've done any sort of like real math, you know. And so I wanted to um, study hard and do well on it because um, it is a ranked list, right? And so the better you do, um, the higher you are on the rank list and the higher chance of you actually getting into uh, into the program. And so um, hopefully, I guess by, you know, with this with this video, I'm able to, I guess, share some knowledge with you guys and help, you know, improve the chances of you actually getting into the program. And so what I'm sharing with you guys is what happened to me and what I experienced on um, the day of my test was yesterday, right? And so my test was scheduled at um, eight o'clock and so I arrived early and they allowed you to uh, check in at 730. And it's important to mention too that since it's still COVID season that um, I guess it's, it's required for him to ask you just some simple COVID questions like, oh, have you been exposed to anybody that's been tested positive uh, recently? Or have you yourself have been uh, tested positive lately? You know, and if you answer no to all these questions, then, you know, he allows you to, you know, pass and, and, you're, uh, and you check in with the, um, with the other person. And uh, to check in, it's just your um, your ID. You just you know, physically show your ID, right? And make sure you're on the list. And they give you a little like name tag with your application number on it. And then um, you have to verify your your um, your social security number with the uh, with the person too to uh, just to pretty much um, verify that that's that's who you are. So after checking in, um, they signed me a table. And on the table has everything that you need for the test, right? Um, they give you scratch paper, they give you pencil, and um, also your laptop and mouse. Um, the test itself is no calculator, so they make it very clear that any sort of cheating will result in pretty much a disqualification. The guy was like mentioned it like over and over again in the you know when he was giving us the um, instructions for the test, and so don't cheat. And don't risk yourself getting pretty much DQ. Another thing too that I have to mention is that you don't want to be late to this test. Uh, you know, you had to wait a long time to have this opportunity to come in here and um, take this test, right? And so you don't want to mess up. First of all, be late and like not have the opportunity to take it. I, I wouldn't, I, I couldn't even imagine, you know what I mean? Like how long I had to wait and then just to show up like five minutes late and not be able to, uh, you know, take the test. Like then you have to wait who knows how long, right? And so don't be late, come prepared, um, come in with the mentality of, I'm gonna come in here and beast on this test, right? Don't come in here with like, oh, I'm gonna I'm a not study and come in here, uh, you know, expecting that, oh, since I already taken some math, uh, that I'm just gonna come in here and like do well. It's like, no, that's not how it's gonna work. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna throw some curveballs at you that you're not expecting. And if you're not prepared, then you know you're gonna be spending too much time on one problem. Next thing you know, like 20 minutes pass by, you're not even halfway through the test. And so the test that um I took first was the math test. There was some, there was like 36 questions or so on the test, and you had. I can't remember the exact time. It was like 40 something uh, minutes to do the math test. I know um, the math test was shorter. Like they give you a shorter amount of time to do the math test and the reading test, which uh, personally, I think it should have been the other way around because I finished the reading test a lot faster than I did the math test, you know? And so personally, I feel like those two numbers should switch. So what's actually on the test, right? Um, what I suggest you guys focus your studying on is being able to calculate uh, for example, like long division um, by hand, obviously, because it's a no calculator test, right? And so you want to do your studying with no calculator. Um, you, long division, uh, multiplication, and by multiplication, I mean like two digit multiplied by a two digit number or a three digit number multiplied by a two digit number. You know what I mean? Like practice those because there's a lot of those and you want to be able to... Uh, uh, you know, like solve those efficiently because like multiplication, division, add, subtract, that's like your foundation and your, pretty much your foundation for 
algebra, right? You're taking an algebra test. So you have to, those skills are very important. Um, in a, uh, uh, those skills are very important for you to succeed at solving algebraic equations, right? Um, fractions was another thing to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide fractions. They'll also give you a, an equation, um, in slope intercept form, right? And, uh, you have to quickly identify which graph, uh, equals that equation. And so if you know what you're looking for, you can quickly identify, you know what I mean? Like, for example, if that graph is a, is a positive slope or is it a negative slope? Like you can quickly tell by if there's like a plus or a minus sign, right? Um, and then so quickly identifying which graph equals the equation uh another thing too is uh, um, instead of an equation they'll give you a table right so an xy table with with some points right and then using that table you have to identify which graph equals that um that table uh, be able to manipulate the variables in a formula so that you can isolate certain um, variables to solve for that you know what i mean so like they'll ask you solve for k or whatever and they'll give you an equation um and then you have to manipulate like, oh, minus this on this side, plus this on this side, or divide, or whatever the case may be, so that you isolate that variable on one side so you can solve for it. So be able to do that. Know what order of operation is, right? So PEMDAS, uh, for you, for those of you that don't know what PEMDAS is, is parentheses, exponents, multiplications, divisions, addition, and subtraction, right? So there's an order that you do uh, in order to solve certain equations, right? So be able to, you know, uh, figure out when to use it and then uh, and then you know and then solving for for x or whatever it may be and being able to solve equations that they make you plug ver uh, numbers in for variables you know what i mean like they'll give you they'll give you an equation and then they'll give you like l equals three and then g equals four or whatever it may be right and then you have to plug those in to the equation and solve for um x or whatever right so being able to do that um quick and efficiently uh, because sometimes they'll throw like some, some weird equations that you do sometimes like fractions like a whole bunch of you know on the numerator and then a whole bunch of other variables on the denominator and then you have to be able to plug it in and then use order or operation correctly to you know solve for the other variable you know and so um and so sometimes it can get really like really tricky you know what i mean and especially without a calculator it's like man like even with that calculator is already hard enough you know what i mean and so <laughs> you know what i mean and so it's very important that you study you know Try to study without a calculator, like, and I'm not saying like completely not use a calculator, like use a calculator when you need to, you know what I mean? But for the most part though, you should focus on, you know, no calculator studying so that when you're actually taking the test, like the, 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 the memory, um, and the steps to get certain numbers, like it's, it's engraving your mind, you know what I mean? So you're not just always relying on the calculator. Another thing that you should probably get uh, good on too um, is exponents. So exponents, for example, they'll give you like a two to the fourth power plus two to the sixth power, right? And then you're gonna be able to solve for that. And it's not always addition and subtraction, multiplication, divide too. So be able to do all that with exponents. Um, with like bases, different bases. So different bases meaning, so instead of like two to the fourth and two to the sixth, it's two to the fourth and then like three to the fifth or something like that right and to be able to like uh um um solve for that because there's different rules depending on what the bases are and then different rules too if the exponents are the same or different so be able to identify that and uh you know solve for whatever and you can always skip a question if you don't know the answer to it and or if you're spending too much time on it and you can always come back to it at the end right because um time management is definitely a real thing in this test because it is a time test right and so you don't need to spend too much time on one um one question and so um you know pace yourself yes but at the same time though you know pay attention to the clock because you know you don't want to be you know not have enough time towards the end and then like 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 rushing you know and then like forgetting the sign or forgetting a couple steps to to solve the 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 problem so after you're done with your math test, um, you know, you guys take a little break, like a 10 minute break. And then when you come back, you take your reading test. Uh, so your reading test is a little bit longer. Um, and for me, uh, I had, let's see, in my reading test, they gave me, I want to say about four different passages, maybe five. I can't remember exactly. Four or five different passages, uh, pretty lengthy passages too. I'd say maybe four to six paragraphs, um, in each passage right and then in each passage there's uh however many questions like seven six or seven questions or so uh, you know regarding that passage and so they'll make you read 
um, read it and answer the question pretty much. Uh, I mean, that's what a reading comprehension is, right? Um, and so I guess some tips and tricks that I can, I can give you guys is what worked for me was I went, before I read the passage, I read the question uh, first. And I kind of skipped through the, the answers to the question, you know, kind of get an idea of what I should be looking for, you know. And so as I'm reading through, I'm kind of, you know, like, all right, so I think this is what it's asking for. But sometimes man, it can get really tricky. Like you think that's the answer, but it's really not. It's like, part, like it can be the answer, but not really, you know. So you have to really dig deep and like think, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know how much uh, more I can give you on the reading comprehension. I mean, um uh, it's a time test too, but like I said, I think they give you more than enough time on the on the reading part to to, um, to do it because it seemed like a lot of the other test takers like they like they were just hanging out with like plenty of like time left. You know what I mean? Like they're just like looking around type of thing and towards the end, you know. So I don't know what else to tell you regarding the uh, the reading comprehend reading comprehension test. Just you know, just try to read that like you can always reread the passage you know what i mean so spend time like if you don't know if you don't know the answer the first time like try to reread the passage maybe the second um time through something clicks in your head you know what i mean um other than that i don't know what else to give you i guess uh to wrap things up um a couple other probably important information that i found out um uh, and this is pertaining to the um the local that i applied at right so it could be different um, depending on where you're at, what stage you're in and whatnot. But I guess my, the amount of people that were, that were t t taking the test with, with me, was probably like no more than 20. So there was about 20 people taking the test. Um, and I talked to the instructor afterwards. Um, I asked him kind of like what the follow up, you know, like what should we expect? So they said that, you know, if you failed, then, you would have gotten an email within a day or two saying that you failed. And if you failed, then you can't retake the test for six months. They mentioned that a few times as well. Um, like, don't try to cheat the system. Like, if you failed, then you have to take six months off. Um, like, legit, like, six months off and then um, and then come back, you know, and then you can retake it. Um, and the way they know is that they, I, I'm, I'm assuming they all use the same website to take the aptitude test. Uh, and so when you log in using your login, it'll tell you like, oh, like you logged in, like for example, I logged in December 13th yesterday, right? So the next time, if, if I were to fail, the next time that I could take the test again, it would be six months from yesterday, right? So it's logged, you know what I mean? And so he was saying that if you were trying to cheat the system and like come back like five months later, then then the when you try to log in to take your test, it would, it would notify you and that it could potentially like disqualify you from from um from applying ever again essentially you know what i mean and so you always want to do well in the first first try you know what i mean um another thing too is that he mentioned that the class size uh, so so after everything right so after everything um and you do get accepted um the class size is typically you know 15 to 18 he said uh, 15 to 18 students and so and so, as I mentioned before, this is a rank list, right? So if you do well on your math test, you do well on your interview, then you get placed on a rank. And so if the class size is 15 to 18, so if you rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down to 15 to 18, then your, per, your, your chance of getting in is really high, right? Um, if you were, the, for example, the 30th rank, then you might not get in that round, but if another round of testers were to come in and they were to test higher than you and or get a better rank than you then you wouldn't necessarily move up you know what i mean you would still stay kind of where you're at depending on what the next rank of the next class uh testers are at you, you, get, you get what i'm saying and so um just because you pass a test just because you get an interview doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get in and and so and so, you know, to hire a chance of getting in, you got to get higher uh, on that rank list. And to get high on the rank list, you got to beast your test and you got to beast your interview, you know. And in order to do those two things, man, you got to be prepared. You know what I mean? You you got to be prepared. That's, that's that's all it is. And so, I don't know. Yeah, hopefully uh, this video brings some, uh, some sort of knowledge to you and maybe 
puts you at ease, uh, you know, regarding, oh, like, what should I expect on the tests, um, uh, and whatnot, and so, you know, thank you for, I guess, joining me, and, uh, I'm, I'm still waiting to hear back, I just took my test yesterday, so, I haven't gotten an email today saying I failed, so, that's good news, right, he said, no news is good news, so, no news today, baby, so, <laughs> I guess I'll keep you guys updated, alright, peace.